Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It was good, y'all. This is probably my last tutorial for now, and then I think tomorrow I will be giving uh, my thoughts on how it's been for Linux throughout the past what, a month or two since I've installed it. So yeah, this video is... It, it can be kind of important, depending on what you use it for. Uh, but for me, I'm going to be having this titled as How to Get VirtualBox to Work for I guess you could say Xfinity Stream if you use Comcast for Xfinity Streams because uh, Xfinity doesn't work on Linux and also of course the PAL admin you know the PAL admin thing that you would uh, see on Windows so to do that of course you know you gotta have the main thing you gotta have the Oracle box right here the Oracle vir virtual box right here manager you would need this now for me this is from Fedora slash Bazite. Now, I'm probably going to title it a certain way. This is how to make it work with Bazite. I know through um, Fedora, you can make it work with Fedora, but Bazite, um, I haven't seen almost anyone talk about this. I guess probably because uh, they think this is, you know, something that you should not use with it. But once I show you why I use vir Virtual Oracle Box with, I mean, Virtual Box with this, then you will understand why I currently use this over any other um, virtualization thing that's there. Now, if I get any tips on how to do this with other ones, that's fine. I'll probably drop this, but for the time being, I'm using this with VirtualBox. So the thing is with how to get this to install, you have to follow a couple of steps. For one, first and foremost, is you need to go to the website that has the VirtualBox setup. You know, it has the VirtualBox, you know, package, whatever the hell it is. You need to go to that. You need to you need to actually download it and uh, download the one that fits specifically with what you're looking for. So for me, because it's Bazite and Bazite is a form of Fedora, you go to the recent one that has Fedora up uh, for it. So for me, it works for some reason. It works with, with Fedora 40.1. When really I'm on Bazite 41, it still works. And you put this down as the main, I guess, you know, sudo command if you're on Fedora or anything else, you, you can put it down per usual. Now, for this, it would be sudo rpm ostry install, and then you copy or you drag, in this case, I would say drag. You drag that file. You drag that file that has the, the virtual box from there, and then you put it right into your terminal, and then after that, you press enter. Of course, it's going to require your password, so then you put in your password. Now, when that's done, and then you reboot your computer, because that's definitely something you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to basically look at one of these kernel dever things. Now, um, I think the one that worked for me was the, it was, I believe it was this one. Yeah, I think it was this one right here. It was sudo rpm austri install make time pearl gcc dkms kernel devils kernel headers allow inact dash dash allow dash inactive. Now, I think that was one of the ones that worked. Another one is the uh, one you do it without the sudo, but I think. Um, I'm sorry, not more about the sudo. I think this one was uh, just the main one of the main ones. I think the other one you do it was with the devil. Uh, here it is, right here. The devil dash dollar sign. Uh, per, you know your name dash r. That's probably another option, but I think the one that I used with the um without it, I think that one worked fine. So then after that, oh, one more thing before you. Uh, before I go ahead and, and further, I'm going to tell you this right now. When you reboot and you almost log in, to, I guess you're close to logging in for your uh, Fedora or your Bazite, make sure that your Ostry is at number one. Okay? Make sure it's at one. It will not work at zero. If you try it at zero, you'll be stuck there all day trying to figure out why isn't, it, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? You'll literally be like Virgil from Devil May Cry 3. And be bitching about why isn't this working until you finally realize oh shit all I, had, all I had to do was go one down when it goes to the login thing and then after that it'll it'll probably all work um so when that's done you should be able to open up your start menu and then you put down your virtual box you should be able to see it there it should be the first thing there 
Now for me, it would it would of course be like this. But what I made sure to do was to add it to the desktop or some shit like that, or maybe add it as a uh, manager. It was one of the two. As long as I'm able to see it there, as long as it was one of the first things there by the time I get on. Now, of course, it should be able to show up like this, and it should be blank. Now, if you have your you know your ISOs for for all this then you should be able to set it up like how you usually do if you know how to set up virtual manager I'm um, sorry yeah if you know how to set up a virtual manager through virtual box then um, this shouldn't be a problem you should be able to follow the steps like how you usually would from any other tutorial with how to set up a virtual box now um, as far as I'm concerned I don't think this works with Windows 10 I tried to make it work with Windows 10 before but it didn't I could always be wrong and try it again, but honestly, for me, my main objective was to make sure that it worked with a Windows operating system. It didn't matter whether it was Windows 10 or whether it was Windows 11, as long as I got it to work. Now, of course, what's also important is the VBox Guest Editions. You make sure you try to find and you download those as well. You'll probably find those through the, uh, um, if you just Google search them, you will be able to find them. You have a better chance to find them from there. Then there's a Virtuo if you ever need to use that. There you go. And of course, per usual, um, one last thing you have to make sure to do before you even so much as activate your uh, virtual machine. Um, for the internet usage, you make sure that you go to your uh, adapt, you know, uh, network enable adapter, bridge adapter, and you put down the actual MAC address that you have for your, uh, you know, you know, your internet. That way you can get this to work. Otherwise, it's, you're just going to be sitting there looking messed up. Um, one other thing to make sure. Uh, particularly if you're either on Bazite or Fedora, to really make sure that the MAC address you have set up for this, that it all connects with this. So you can see restrict to device BSSID. You know, make damn sure that all this works the way that it should, uh, even on your main settings. So so that way uh, it'll be fine. Um, now we go to start. Um, when you start, when you press the start button. At first, it would not let you start up because it would give you some uh, random um, error. Now, it's not a bad thing, but it, this is something you're going to have to do every time you want to use the uh, the virtual box. Okay? So, what you're going to do, let me go ahead and take that off. As you can see, my Windows 11 opened uh, through the virtual manager. Or virtual box. I keep calling it that. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me to, uh, today. I guess I'm just sleepy. Um, what you do is you put down sudo r uh r mod, which is remove. You know, you're gonna remove something. Now, I don't know how it goes through NVIDIA, but I know at the very least this is how it works. I think it goes the same way, which is KVM. I think that might be for just anyone else. Um, but if you're in AMD, you put down underscore and then you put down AMD. You must put this in every time you activate, you try to activate the virtual box. Otherwise, you'll get stuck with that error each and every time. Unless I find a fix for it or someone else find a fix for it. You have to do this every single time you want to use the virtual box. Otherwise, um, you'll just be sitting there stuck. So, um, every time. I don't know why, but it basically tells you that you need to remove. You basically, it won't tell you, tell you, but you need to actually remove the kernel that's related to it. And there you go. And that's that it'll work. Now, as you can see, everything will work through Windows 11. That includes even the internet portions of it. In fact, uh, I could show you the internet portions of it as well. If you guys know how PAL admin works on Windows, then you know exactly how it will work. This is not new. Um, but one thing you can also make sure to do, if this helps, because I don't think it works with you dragging. As you can see for me, it doesn't work to drag stuff in and out between uh, Linux, to Win um, you know, Linux to Windows. But there is another way to do this. So what you do is you go to your settings. If you want to be able to share files, this is what I'm showing you. Um, you go to shared folders and then you put down uh, a folder that you want to share. So for me, it's CMD Power World that you see here on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. This is the one I want to share. 
as you can see access full auto mount yes so then that way when I open this up when I press this button you should you see it right up here and this is the exact stuff that I have from here you know what I mean the exact stuff now what I can do just to show an example let me go ahead and copy this and paste this in here as you can see it is in there now you won't see it in here initially but when you uh, refresh you will now see it in there so any files that you send um, into that folder it will be copied in into the Windows 11 one and then after that you could just drag and drop do whatever you wish from there um, now again if you know how power admin works then you know how to you know how you do your shit especially if you kept your power admin files and everything everything should be good so uh, for me let me just boot up the power admin so then that way I can show you And as you can see, this is my uh, Power World server. This is the version. This is the uh, um, yeah. This is the version. This is everything that that came with it recently. I don't know if Power Admin has a updated version, but if it does, I will gladly download it. Um, of course, you could be able to see my event scheduler, everything. That way, I'll know when the server ends, when it starts up, and I don't even need to. I don't even need to get on to do it because it does it by itself. This is why I missed it so much. Because I can literally just be sleeping like I'm about to do when this video is over. I could be outside. I could be at work. And everything will be handled for me without even so me so much as doing anything. I'm not, I don't even have to be at the desk. So right now, um, I already have everything settled like how it usually would be. So I'm just going to press the start button. And yes, you do have to make sure you have Steam CMD. Now, just in case I made sure to download Steam to the uh, um, for this, so then that way everything will work just fine. Now, while that's going on, guess what? For people that was wondering how to get the uh, get Xfinity to work with, uh, yeah, get to get Xfinity to work with this, you can see you'll have a problem such as this. Where it would say update your browser to start streaming, and the, and it will say before upgrading to the latest browser version, make sure you are using a supported operating system, because as you can clearly see, Comcast or in this case Xfinity does not support um, Linux. So this is the next best thing that you have is if you want, you can use the same browser uh, that you know the same browser that you always use. let me get off that because that's for you know the router and as you can see it's loading up and it will work now clearly as much as I want to play something well I can um I'll play just a random uh thing let me just see if I could play uh why not? I'll play. I'll play some random. Uh, I'll play this. I'll play hometown if it'll let me. But yeah, as you can see, it's loading up, and it's gonna work in a little bit. In fact, you you can full Our screen. Or, gathering the most in depth. So you can see we got a commercial on, but yeah, as you can see, it now fully works. That's how you get Linux to work with the Xfinity stream so if you're a if you have cable if you have Xfinity cable but you use Linux as a you know software but you still want to watch your TV there you go that's how you're able to do it now of course you could maximize it or you can you know move the screen whatever it is let me see if, what, what the fuck was it there's a thing you could use where you could just fully screen it, you know, put this in. But for me, um, I don't want to do that because I don't want to, I don't want to mess up what I got going on here. But there, it is a way you could do that. Okay, you go to view. There you go, full screen mode and seamless mode. That's how you do it. My bad. For me, I don't want to go to either of these. If anything, I'll just have it on full, full screen like this. And then, uh, there you go. But yeah, there you go. That's how you get the Xfinity stream to work. This probably goes for other stuff as well. Such as your uh, 
you know, however Windows typically works for you, you can get it, you can kind of get it to work through the virtual box. Um, the same can be said for the Power World server. Now, of course, obviously with the Power World server, I can, I'll go ahead and tell you one more thing before I go ahead and head out. You must be able to do your port forwards the same way like how you did back then. Otherwise, this will not work. In fact, let me go ahead and see if I could get into my Power World server. Um right now i know power roll had an update i don't know if my steam updated it uh that's what i'm about to find out if it didn't that's fine i'll just do another recording to show oh hey look my power roll server works despite my virtual box you know hosting the server because it doesn't matter for me the way how i see it okay let's take a look Power World should be done. Okay, yes, this is perfect. I can actually test that out now. Okay. It should be able to launch with no problem, I hope. Because I haven't gotten on it in a little bit. Okay, well, as soon as it turns out, I'm getting some Power World issues. So, okay, well, I'll figure it out. But, yeah, my Power World server definitely does work. So, that's one good thing. I just got to worry about the game being an issue. That's 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 not a problem. I, I, I ain't sweating all that. I don't care about all that right now. But, yeah, that's everything. So, then, guys, I hope this worked out for you. I hope you guys enjoy yourself the rest of the day, night, evening. I'll see you from my uh, impressions with Linux, I guess. I don't know, tomorrow. So, I don't know. So, then, bye. I, ho I hope I helped. Actually, no, I'm not going to shut this down. What am I doing?